Welcome back. We're going to get back into the Fortress City setting now with Labyrinth Lord. Um, you know, the uh, the other one didn't seem like it lasted very long, but at the same time, it seems like we've done a long, uh, it's been a long wait uh, before we've gotten back to uh, Lorke, Sig, Elias, and Pommeline. Now, unfortunately, it's not the original crew. We we lost Veronique and we lost Galibraid, which was, uh, it was really sad, but um, that's all right. We've got our original team. So I'm just going to go through, as usual, the books we're going to be using. We're using Labyrinth Lord Core and Labyrinth Lord Advanced Companion. Um, we're going to be using both of the Table Fables. Uh, for Lorke, we're using the Necromancer class by James and Jody Mishler. And then for Sig and Pommeline, we're using the Class Compendium. So uh, those are our books. Uh, let's get into the scenario and what we're going to be doing. Only two of the original Horrible Four remain, Lorke and Sig. Now, I said on the last episode um, of, uh, of the Fortress City that we were going to roll a die and we were going to determine how many levels they gained in our absence. I rolled a d6 and I rolled a 4, so Lorke, Sig, Pomeline, and Elias are all level 6. So that is pretty nice. They should be able to fight some more powerful stuff and hopefully survive here. They had joined a gang last time, which I'm going to determine the name of in a second here. Primarily, we're also going to be making use of the 3x5 Dungeon Master. We've got the Oracles on the D6. We have a series of twists. I've also added Senses and Emotions, as well as a version of the Chaos rank. And I've also added the Likelihood mechanic. On the back here, we have a series of Topics. Uh, a lot of these are based on the twists. So if we want to roll for a random topic, like a rumor, uh, the top is the blue die and the left there. You can't really see it because of the lighting, but that's the red die. And we've got NPCs, organizations, items, locations, monsters, and magic. So that's how we're going to be uh, that's how we're going to be making decisions. Uh, we're going back to full randomization so we don't have a module guiding us. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I think, so to start with, I feel like our, uh, I feel like the horrible two, I guess, and the two other people that are hanging out with them are currently on an errand for the gang that they're working with, whose name I still haven't randomized. I'll do that in a bit. But I think right now what I'm going to do is we're going to crack open Table Fables, and on page 9 it has this, uh, like this quest randomizer. It's D100s, so we're going to roll D100s and see what kind of quest we're looking at. So let's grab these, and let's take a look here. That's a 53. So we'll look up in our Table Fables. On 53 it says... A young prophet comes to the party. Her visions have shown her that she will somehow die in the next three days, and she hires the party to keep her alive. Well, this can translate directly into our scenario. The person that comes to us, I feel like, is someone we've met before. Do you remember her? She, if it'll focus, she is the one that led us to the roof, where we encountered a group of zombies that managed to uh, uh, that managed to wipe out two of our party members and a random stranger that ran in to help. Uh, the only two survivors, of course, being Lorke and Sig. So I think she has come to us, and Lorke is going to be the one dealing with her. He's the de facto leader now since Veronique passed. Uh, he's still a little shaken up about that. And he's not terribly happy to see her again. As she uh, she bailed on us, really the last time the last time we did anything she wanted, but I feel like we should uh, randomize what she wants. So I have something here called things overheard in a tavern. She says that she's you know having visions that she'll die, but uh, 
I feel like we need some prompts for exactly what she's saying. So things overheard in a tavern might give us some insight into what she's saying. So let's take our D100s again. And let's take a look at exactly what is she saying. We can just kind of reinterpret. And then we roll. We've rolled a 96. So let's head to the next page here. <laughs> uh, with random thing over here in a tavern says hick hiccup well that was well brought up well that wasn't really applicable so let's try it again we're just and again all we're doing is we're looking for some context as to what she saw in her vision that's threatening her now remember this was a priestess of a goddess that was found in that um, in the book of petty gods that I have I might have to look back and see which goddess she uh, she served. I remember it being a goddess. That's all right. 83. Well, this isn't helping us much. Uh, 83 is, I like knitting. Do you? Orca says, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> she's just striking up some conversation. And so Lorca says, will you get to the point already before I have Sig just smash your head into the wall? And she says, all right, all right. Third time's the charm with these, uh, with these dice. Says, a hundred things overheard in a tavern. Number three. Honestly, I saw this strange ghost and nearly crapped my pants. Well, that's more helpful than this silly conversation about knitting. What do you want us to do about it? Well, very likely this ghost she's seeing... Oh my, uh, this is an interesting scenario, isn't it? She's seeing a ghost in her visions. Now, there is a chance that this is like, I, th I think Veronique or Galibraid might be blaming her for their deaths. Is this so? Here it is. Yeah, you know, let's go with our oracles. So again, looking at the oracles, we have a one through six. And the higher we get, the more uh, the more it is a yes. But I'm actually going to use a, a likelihood mechanic that I put in there, which has to do with it's, – it's basically advantage from 5th edition. So we're going to roll two. And because it would make sense for the story, we're going to say that it's likely that this is the case. So it is likely that it is one of our old companions. So whichever one's higher, four. Yes, but. Yes, it was one of our old companions, but we don't know which one. Interesting. Very interesting. So all one of our old companions has returned from the dead and is looking for vengeance from this woman whose name I can't remember because she is a jerk. <laughs> and I... Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I can't say I blame them. In fact, uh, I nearly did it again. Uh, good old days. You're always mistaking Lorca for Galibraid. It's just a cool name, you know. So Lorca probably looks her in the face and says, yeah, well, I mean, can you blame them? And she's rather flabbergasted. And he goes, all right, all right, we'll solve your problem. But it's going to cost you. In fact, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you 33 gold. Probably more than that. But, you know, we'll, we'll just go with the die roll. We are kind of in the middle of an errand, you see. I mean, we've we've joined a rather influential group of people. So we'll see what they want us to do. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to it. Try to survive by then, will you? Now, we have some interesting possibilities here. Uh, thanks to the class compendium by James Spahn. Span? Spahn. Span. Um, there is a... There's actually a class in here that has some very interesting possibilities, and it's called it's called an idolin. Now, let's see here. Idolins are like they're like ghosts, uh, and it, I can't see it here, but it says that oh, I don't know. That's their abilities. I just want to find what this says here. 
Oh, here, yes. There's a section here on page 138 called Becoming Idolin. And if you see what this says here, at the Labyrinth Lord's discretion, player characters who are slain may rise again as first level Idolins. These characters lose all previous abilities associated with their class. Former thieves cannot pick pockets, and former magic users cannot cast spells, for example. If the Labyrinth Lord offers this option for a slain character to become an Idolin, that character must succeed a saving throw versus death based upon the level and class they were while they were alive. If successful, they rise 1D, uh, 46 hours later as a first level Idolin. The player of uh, newly reborn Idolin and the Labyrinth Lord will need to work together to determine the character's driving passion. So, one of our old companions has returned as an Idolin, which means they've been running around for how long would it take characters from go to go from levels two to six? I would reckon a while. We've never heard of this, so, but I feel like we should determine randomly who it is. So I think on an even number, it is the ghost of Veronique. On an odd number, it's the ghost, heaven forbid, of uh, Galibraid. Because if it's Galibraid, he's not going to hit anything. So let's uh, <laughs> let's give it a shot. Evens or odds? Evens, Veronique. It's Evens, it's Veronique. Yeah, she actually did work. Oh, that makes me happy. We're getting her back. Ah, good, 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 good. Well, that makes me super happy. But in order to determine how we're going to find Veronique, we need to determine a location. So Lorike asks, whatever her name is. I remember it being like weirdly masculine, <laughs> her name. Um, but I'm going to have to watch back. But again, I think what we're going to do is we're going to break out table fables. And we're going to determine a location, in this case a room. Remember that the Fortress City is like a huge cluster of buildings. So much so that sometimes it looks like one giant building. So there's twisting hallways, there's bridges between buildings, there's subterranean levels, there's roof, roof levels, and there's like uh, 44 floors. So wherever she saw this thing, we're going to have to find it again. And I, I assume automatically that she's going to remember at least part of where she was so we're going to crack open table fables and we're going to um we're going to designate a room type and this is where she will have seen this uh seen this apparition of veronique so what we're going to do is we're going to go to page 63 under room type and we're going to roll some dice so we want to give as much uh, as much possibility as possible because the Fortress City is enormous. So we're going to roll a d20, and if we roll above a 12, we're going to do a d3. Or wait. Is that miscellaneous? Whatever. We'll figure it out. <laughs> so let's uh, roll a d20. We've rolled a 14. That is above 12. So let's go ahead and roll uh, evens odds. Evens odds. Odds. So that's a, this is a religious type area. And that's a 14. That's a shrine room. So she remembers seeing this person in a shrine. That makes sense. This is a priestess, isn't it? So perhaps... Well, I already know what Veronique's driving passion is. I think she's in it for revenge. Veronique wants revenge on her or whoever created the zombies. We might be able to sway her away from murdering this priestess. But we're going to have to find her first. Now, do you remember what floor this was on? This was on floor 18, because I rolled two nines. Well, all right. Uh, Lor K immediately jumps at the chance to see his friend again. And whatever the gang was asking him to do, he feels sort of obligated to abandon it. 
That being said, we're going to head to floor 18, and we're going to begin our dungeon crawl. Man, are you excited to do this again? It's been forever since we just randomized a dungeon crawl. Uh, I remember this book being kind of dull with dungeon crawls, but I don't know. Maybe they we're actually measuring things correctly. Maybe it'll turn out better. So let's set up and let's start. Um, we're not going to have too much more time today, but we're going to have enough time to get started. So I'm pretty excited. Let's go hunt a ghost. Okay, I've got the first room of the 18th floor here. Uh, let's see, the stairs are in it. And we have a 60 by 50 foot room. Oh, uh, I found her name, by the way. The priestess's name is Farkas. Um, and I'm going to see if she's come with us. Uh, so would she be brave enough to be with us? No. And she's probably gone to hide somewhere. I'm not sure how we're going to find her afterwards, but okay. So as usual, I'm going to be tracking, uh, encounter types or in random encounters based on how many actions. Uh, so once everybody gets done, then we're going to roll a D six. And on a one, we're going to get an encounter, which is going to be a settled encounter, seeing as we are in a densely populated city. So the first thing that's going to happen, we have a double door here to the north. Sig is going to go ahead and throw that open. And he is going to take a look out. What kind of room have we or hallway? Let's roll our D10 to generate. And this is where everything goes to crap because... Uh, uh, this generator does some crazy stuff sometimes, but that's part of the game. That's a three. That's one through six. We're in a room. What kind of room? So this is D12 for width. Six. Uh, that's 30 feet. So that's, remember, each square is five feet here. So this is a room that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Have I messed this up somehow? I did. I did this room wrong. So this is actually a 30 by 25 foot room. This should actually be like enormous. So we're going to retcon that. I was still kind of doing tens in my head uh, from other games. So we will, you know, let's, let's roll this again, the dimensions, see what we get. That's a nine. 40. Okay. So it's actually, it's actually bigger. Why am I moving you? Sorry, Sig, didn't mean to move you around. So that's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay. So let's get these corners here. And the length, two. Not, so it's kind of like a long, narrow room here. So that's tw 20 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20, like so. I assume these rooms are rectangular. Um, so before we fill in anything, I'm actually going to remember to do the check for doors. So this is kind of where things get a little screwy with the generator, because if you look, one through four here is none, unless it's a dead end. So I guess we'd re-roll. Five through seven is just one door. And then eight, nine, and ten have D4 and D6 rooms resp er, doors, respectively. So it, it can get rather narrow or linear, but, you know, we'll do it anyway. Uh, that's a seven. We got it for seven. See, that's still that's just one door, but that's all right. Let's roll to see where that door is as well. So we'll get our D four. That's a two. That's in the east wall. So that's over here, assuming we're facing north. So we have a door over here on the east wall, and then we can go whoop and whoop and fill in this room here. So we've just discovered the first room, or the first other room of the 18th floor. If we would like, Sig is going to take a quick look around as he, he's just kind of thrown the door open. 
and he's going to look and see what sort of general purpose this room is. And we can determine what's in it just based on its purpose. So let's give it a d12. This is a 5. I don't think it's a closet. <laughs> uh, maybe we should treat these like buildings, like in a city. Yeah, okay. So on page 72, we have a building generator. And we're just gonna we're gonna generate them like dungeon rooms, but we're gonna designate their purpose like city buildings. I don't know. Uh, I'm still kind of figuring out what kind of exactly how to generate stuff in a setting like this, but we will figure it out. So let's roll d6 for the building purpose. What's this for? That's a six. Religious. Okay, so this it does appear to be some kind of temple level. Uh, so I suppose we are in the right place. So what manner of uh, what manner of room is this? D and that's our D four two. Uh, this is an orphanage, or at least a place where children are taken care of. So I mean, the kind of stuff we can expect to find in here, I'm guessing, is a lot of small bedrolls. Are there any? Are there? Is there anyone in here right now? No, it's it's vacated. Uh, I assume possibly because there is a very angry wraith wandering the floor. So who knows where they've taken the kids at this point. Lorca is moving over to investigate that door there. Uh, we're going to determine if it's locked, unlocked, or trapped. And this can be found on the same page where one would generate doors. That's page 62 of Table Fables. So we're going to do the lock thing. That's a D8. And he's going to check it out. That's an eight. That's a trapped door. Oh, Nelly. Okay, so it looks like they've been trying to stop it. They've been trying to, to catch or destroy this wraith somehow. Uh, Pomeline, we're going to need her help. She has the potential ability to undo these kinds of things. Uh, hence her... Um, she's got a thief ability for her uh, her lucky fool class so that she's got a 35 percent to pull that off is that correct she leveled up did I did I fix that it should be they should be fixed okay the thief ability was correct I had to update the hear noise and beginner's luck abilities uh, I just got beginner's luck completely wrong uh, so she is going to uh, move up beside Lorke. She's going to take a look. She's going to like, <laughs> she's like, yeah, it's trapped all right. Well, I'll give it a shot. So she's got a 35% chance of uh, undoing the trap. She's going to remove. So that means we need to roll. We need to roll like a, I want to say like 70 or 65 or higher. You know, let's just go, uh, we need to meet or roll under 35 on D100s. Uh, that's quite the, uh, that's quite the, that's quite the order. Well, let's see if she can do it. All right, we're counting on you, Pomelaine. If she fails, I'm assuming this is going to set off the trap and we got to roll the super kind of trap. <laughs> so here we go. That's a 75. Um, yeah, yeah. We wanted to, we wanted to roll 35 or below, I believe, uh, to get that to happen. So, well, hang on a second. I might be doing this wrong. So I did a little bit of poking around and I found there's, there are kind of two ways to look at this. And I'm going to roll to see which one I should do. Uh, obviously you could do a hundred minus 35, which would mean... Uh, we'd have to roll a 65 or higher to get within that 35%, or we'd have to get 1 through 35. Uh, so we're going to do highs and lows. Uh, if we roll an even, we're going to be doing highs. If we roll an odd, we're going to be doing lows. Now, of course, this is like, does a trap go off and impale us? So let's take a look. That's odds. We are going to do lows. We have, so that means she has failed. And we're going to determine what kind of trap that is. All right, so we're going to look in the Labyrinth Lord core book for traps. They talk about traps on page 45. 
And honestly, it doesn't say much. Uh, we're not going to be using this mechanic for detecting traps uh, or how traps are generated. Um, so it says the Labyrinth Lord secretly rolls the dice for these checks, but so the players will never know if they fail to find a trap or if there's no one present. Traps have specific triggers, whether it's opening the door or walking over a particular area. Every time a character makes an action that could trigger a trap, the Labyrinth Lord rolls a d6 on a roll of 1 or 2. Uh, that indicates the trap springs. Normally a trap has a specific effect that cannot be avoided. These include... Uh, the floor dumping the characters into a pit of spikes or a poison needle in the door handle. Oop. Now it doesn't talk about specific traps, and I didn't find any kind of trap generation in um, the in the Table Fables books. So I'm going to check one more time in the Advanced Companion Edition because I'd like to randomize this as much as possible. Uh, you know, just for some surprise. And I'm not seeing any special things for traps. So we are just going to have to make it up. So I'm going to say this is, it's not going to be dumping us onto a lower floor. That's kind of insane given where we're in or where we're at. So instead what's probably going to happen is... Well, she failed to disarm it, but did the trap go off? So we're going to roll that on a one or a two. It did. The trap goes off. So I'm going to say this is some kind of like spike trap uh, or um, maybe a uh, poison needle actually does seem rather plausible for Labyrinth Lord. So this is an unavoidable effect, which means Pommeline having tried to disarm the door, gets pricked by a poison needle. Now, as we talked about back in our, <laughs> back in our uh, basic fantasy game, uh, poison in basic fantasy is save or die. And I don't know how it is in Labyrinth Lord. Again, I'm going to take a quick look and we're going to determine the fate of Pommeline. So I had to do a little bit of digging. Uh, the core Labyrinth Lord, rule, Labyrinth Lord rules don't talk about poison that much. But it says, poison usually kills if the saving throw is failed. Uh, so, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. So, I hate to lose a character immediately, but this is old school gaming. Pommeline has a... Save versus poison of six, so that's pretty good. So we're going to roll on our d20. If she rolls above a six, she lives. If she fails to roll above a six, we may be losing Pommeline to a poison needle. That's a 13. She's okay, and she's able to open the door.